Well then, Angel Gomez plays one very, very good game for England and suddenly he is linked with Newcastle United. He apparently is now our top target in the summer, so we'll have a look at that. Uh, Bruno's also come in for some criticism from the Brazilian fans who have given him a terrible play rating uh, for the defeat against Paraguay. And is everything now settled in the Mitchell versus Howe drama? Let's have a look at it all here on the Toon Review. Thank you very much for tuning in, guys. But we'll start off with Angel Gomez and, of course... A great game for England the other day, made his debut against Finland and performed really, really well. Um, now, of course, he was formerly at Manchester United as a kid. He moved to Lille uh, in France, where he has excelled and uh, played very well. He's now 24 years of age, uh, but he is in high demand now. And not just from Newcastle United, uh, it is expected that a few teams will start a bidding war in January for Gomez, uh, given that his contract ends in uh, the summer of 2025 so he's only got a few months left on his contract uh, he is available to speak to other teams in January now it doesn't suggest if the teams will put a bid in for him in January or they'll try and get him as a free uh, come the summer now Newcastle United like the free transfers don't they they like going in and seeing if they can uh, get some money off so a free transfer in the summer might be an option for Newcastle United uh, but the way Paul Mitchell has been talking that will not happen uh, he is adamant that Newcastle United now will prioritise top quality players to come in uh, not just in the transfer window coming up in the winter but the summer of 2025 as well after the absolute shit show that was 2024 summer's transfer window it was terrible wasn't it so uh, we're not expecting um, anything great as fans but listen we're promised by the club that things will change but we will face stiff competition for Gomez uh, obviously these players who rise onto the international scene and suddenly uh, they are priority signings from many, many different teams. Manchester United are, of course, in form. Liverpool are interested in them as well. And so are Tottenham Hotspur. Uh, Borussia Dortmund from uh, the Bundesliga are also interested in them. And you can probably add several more clubs to that. Probably Chelsea as well. Why not throw Chelsea into the mix? Because they seem to be in for every sudden player uh, that we see it, uh, that Newcastle United seem to be interested in. Uh, but look, Gomez is a very, very talented player. Now, there isn't any fee in the reports uh, about what we could pay for Angel Gomez. Um, but listen, a 24-year-old, he's not a kid anymore. Uh, he's coming into his prime years as, as a player. So, But his contract is running out. Now, if you're Newcastle United uh, and Paul Mitchell, do you step in and say, right, we'll go for him as a transfer in January because we won't be paying... Uh, the full fee for him because they will want money for him, Lille. They will not want him to leave for nothing come the uh, the summer of 2025. Lille need the money. We know that most of the French clubs are desperate for money and Lille have a real uh, asset on their hands here who they can get money for because he's he's not going to agree a new deal apparently. Uh, he's already uh, told Lille that, so Lille will be looking to cash in on the player come January. They will not want to lose him as a, a freebie in, in the summer. That just will not work for Lille. So expect clubs to start making bids for him. Now, whether Newcastle United are going to be one of those that's, that are involved in the bidding war, only time will tell on that. Of course, we've seen it a million times over that Newcastle United uh, don't get pushed around in a transfer bidding war uh, and they will walk away if they don't think that that transfer is um, legitimately priced, shall we say, or, you know, like happened with Gay with uh, Crystal Palace, they'll just sort of put a bid in and then it'll get rejected, then they'll put another one in. I don't think they're going to afford to do this. If they truly are interested in Angel Gomez, they have to make their status known and they have to go in and play with the big boys for this transfer to happen. Now, whether it does or not, I don't know. Um, I really don't know. Um, it, it, of course, making his debut for England was a huge Huge bonus for him. Uh, of course, picked in the squad by Carsley before these two Nation League games that have just been. Um, and I think he was brilliant. I really, really liked what I saw. Um, and if Newcastle United are interested in him, go and sod and get him because he is a tremendous, tremendous player. And he can only be of a, a, an asset to Newcastle. So let's go and see what we can do. You know, Mitchell is now promising that we're going to be a force in the transfer window. Let's see. Let's go and get him. Because he would be a hell of a signing for Newcastle. Uh, now, uh, as I said at the beginning there, Bruno's took a little bit of fire from the Brazilian fans uh, after these past couple of World Cup qualifiers. Uh, the latest being a 1-0 defeat to Miguel Almiron's Paraguay the other night. 
and uh, Bruno has come in for massive criticism from the Brazilian fans. Now, I didn't see the game. I can't really comment on it. It was a, it was an early morning kickoff, of course, in South America. Um, I don't know whether any of you have managed to watch the game, uh, but the uh, the media apparently were giving Bruno as low as threes and fours out of ten. The fans in the media outlets have given him 1.5 out of 10 uh, for his performance against Paraguay and apparently not very happy with his previous game. Now, what seems to me to be the case is whenever Brazil don't play very well, there's always a scapegoat. And for some reason, that scapegoat with Brazil seems to be Bruno. Um, now, I, I don't know why this is. Um, Bruno's a superb footballer, uh, absolutely magnificent for Newcastle United. Um, but... You know, I mean, is he playing a different role for Brazil uh, or is he just, you know, not good enough in the position? I don't know what is going on with international football with Bruno, but reading what the Brazilian fans have thought of his performances, uh, they've been really critical. And look, we as Newcastle United fans judge Bruno in a Newcastle United shirt and he's been fantastic for us. There's no doubt about it. You know, he does have the odd game. He's got the faults. He's still got faults. There's no doubt about that. When he holds onto the ball too long on the edge of his penalty area, you know, seven out of ten times he gets away with it. The rest of the time he loses the ball. He's got to be careful with that. But his skill on the ball, his vision of passing, his, his work rate, his tenacity, his, his motivation, it's all there. We love Bruno for that. And long may that continue. And I, d I don't think really Eddie Howe wants to take anything out of Bruno's game at all. So I don't know what the Brazilian fans are watching because quite frankly, you know, if Brazil lose, there's one scapegoat and it's always, always, always Bruno. You know, if you look at the last few Brazilian games when they haven't won or they've lost, he has come in for fire from the Brazil fans and the Brazilian media. Um, but I don't know why that is. Um, you know, if, if you watch your South American football or, you, you know, you've seen the games, let me know in the comments below why you think Bruno's come in for such a tough time uh, from the Brazilian fans, because it seems very, very strange, uh, given how good this player actually is. Um, now, of course, with the uh, transfer window came the saga between Eddie Howe, Paul Mitchell and, uh, you know, a little bit of uh, Darren Eels here and there. But it was mainly focused on Mitchell against Howe. This all-out war behind the scenes at Newcastle United, uh, was it uh, as bad as everybody thinks? Or was it just, you know, one of those little things that the media sort of tended to make a, a, mole, a mountain out of a molehill, which seems to be the case? Uh, Paul Mitchell has come out in the last few days and said that um, he and Eddie are going to be closely working together. Uh, they are very, very focused on the upcoming transfer window and things will happen. Now, that's why I think, you know, with the Angel Gomez situation, if we are interested in him, then given what Mitchell has said and how close they're working now, him and how, expect us to go for him. But the Mark Gay situation is still floating around. A lot of media reports saying we're still going to go in for Gahey in the summer. Personally, I'd walk away from that. There's better defenders out there for me, although Gay did play very well for England uh, and all, maybe proved why he was um, valued so highly by Palace, but I still don't think he's anywhere near 70 million quid yet. He may turn out to be that player, but for me, not yet. But there is other defenders out there. Um, but... One man who was publicly upset with everything that went on and possibly upset with his, his, his role now at Newcastle United is Steve Nixon, who was responsible, very, very responsible for the, the signings of Bruno uh, and, of course, Isak, etc. Uh, now, he isn't going to be playing a major part in the transfer uh, system itself. Mitchell's already sort of structured that again. Uh, Nixon said that he wasn't happy, however, he would tow the line. But it is now widely reported that a lot of clubs are sniffing around for Nixon to take him. There's other Premier League teams and there's teams in Europe apparently very interested in Nixon. Uh, so I think it's a, a real shame if we do lose Steve Nixon because behind the scenes he has done a hell of a job for Newcastle United and a job that should be recognised by us fans. You know, he's done very, very well. But of course, as a lot of fans have said as well, times change and structures change. You know, when new staff are appointed, uh, like Paul Mitchell, he will want to put his own stamp on the structure. He already had uh, his say on the previous uh, structures at the club um, and he wants to change things. And that's fair enough for me. If he wants to change it, go ahead and do it. Uh, and if you don't want to tow the line, then maybe look for another job. But, you know, Nixon himself has said he'll tow the line. However, uh, it is widely reported now that he is uh, possibly going to be headhunted by uh, several Premier League clubs 
clubs and clubs across Europe. So we'll, we'll keep an eye on that one. But it looks like the situation with um, with Mitchell and Howe has completely died down. Whatever that was, whatever that was going on, seems to have been squashed now um, by Mitchell and the club themselves. So maybe, just maybe, uh, Newcastle will be very active in the January transfer window and transfer windows moving forward. Mitchell knows where the club needs to be and... Personally, as a fan, I think he's had a bollocking from the chairman, actually. I really do when he was over here. Um, but he's, he's very, very strongly opinionated, as we've seen. But if he can work with Eddie Howe and get these players through the door, then it can only benefit Newcastle United. Uh, Mitchell has got a CV of bringing very, very good players to clubs. Uh, yes, he tends to bring unknown players, but he can bring the big ones in as well. So let's just keep fingers crossed that everything now is water under the bridge from everything that's gone in the transfer window in the summer. And the whole club with the fans can look forward, getting the next few months out the way, performing well in the Premier League and the Cups. And then obviously January window, strengthen the side. And let's let's see how good these guys really are at bringing players in. Uh, now, finally, St. James's Park has had a little bit of an overhaul uh, during the international break, of course. Uh, the Adidas Club Shop is expected to open, uh, I think they said late October at the latest. So uh, you can expect uh, developments on that in the next uh, several weeks or so. Uh, but it is expected to be open before the end uh, of October. But there is new signs up now. I don't know whether you've seen them on uh, social media. The drab grey signs have been, you know, for the stands have been completely revamped, repainted. Um, Gallagher stand is now standing true looking across the city so at least they're doing something behind the scenes with the ground um, whether they've changed anything inside or just you know done it up a little bit uh, we'll see when we get back into St James's Park in a few weeks time uh, but for now uh, they are making a, an attempt to spruce it up a little bit and I think it does it did need a lick of paint let's be honest you know we were all after the takeover we were jumping up and down the fact that the, the windows had been washed for God's sake that's how bad it had got at Newcastle United uh, but now they are really trying to improve things now a lot of people have put on social media and things like that where do we stand on a new stadium now if they're spending money doing St James's Park up I don't think the new stadium is anywhere close, guys, if I'm being openly honest. I think they are going to focus on St. James's Park for the foreseeable future uh, and then see what the, what uh, lies ahead when it comes to a new stadium. But I can, you know, St. James's Park is going to be there for quite a while to come, guys. It, it simply is. And, we, you know, whether they're going to take it to 65, I think that's the first priority. Uh, of PIF and the Newcastle hierarchy to get the ground to a bigger capacity. And then we'll see what the future brings but there you go that is the news guys uh, please do comment down below with uh, everything you think of all the stories in this video but thank you very much for watching uh, if you have enjoyed it please give it the thumbs up very important for the channel and of course if you're new and you like what you see come and join the thousands that have joined the tune review recently by subscribing it's free to do so uh, it's a fantastic community here uh, but don't forget to hit the notification bell so you never miss an upload or a live show. If you're watching this on Thursday, join us at 7 o'clock tonight as we are doing the preview for the Wolves game, of course, at Molyneux, which is the 4.30 kickoff on Sunday. So we'll go through the two possible lineups, injuries, um, where we can win the game, what's dangerous with Wolves, etc. And of course, we'll give you our score prediction. So make sure you tune in for that tonight as well. But in the meantime, folks, have a fantastic Thursday and we'll see you soon. Take care.